So um, I guess what you're describing in oxygen training seems to be much more dynamic than oxygen therapy. You know, I, I talk about uh, hyperbaric chambers a lot. I have one at home. I love it. It's, it's helped me tremendously with a number of things, especially brain function. Um, but that, as you said, is, is passive, right? And so you're not doing anything to challenge yourself because you're in close quarters and you can't, you can't change the cabin or not the cabin pressure because it's not a plane, but you can't change the pressure in a chamber quickly, right? You can't really go from negative oxygen to right. high oxygen environment like that. It's takes a really long time. And I think in order to go low oxygen, you'd have to hold your breath and you don't want to do that when you're depressurizing a chamber. So you're kind of just, you get what you get. And I think there's benefits to it, but it sounds like the difference between a therapy and this is pretty dramatic then. Well, yeah. So if you take a therapy, you know, as a notion, you know, the therapy is a passive, generally passive activity where somebody will, um, okay. So when you use the word therapy, you're usually looking at, you know, a process is administered or managed by a provider and the person receiving doesn't do anything. Okay. So that's like, okay. Kind of like taking your car to the shop is an analogy to a therapy. Okay. Training is something you do to and for yourself. You know, the self-actualization, you know, uh, I'll call it a delivered result or created result versus an earned result. And so when you look at the training or any training methodology, you know, the person who's doing it is in control. They're driving, they're pursuing some objective, whether it's superior fitness or whatever. And it's really about personal self-administration and control of the process. But I think even more importantly, the pursuit of a goal and more or less the absence of somebody that's controlling the process for them. 